What's going on, y'all? I got my good friend David Lambert here. You guys may know him as Brandon Foster from the hit TV series, The Fosters. Um, Brandon and I have been working together for about two years now. And it was right off the bat, right off the bat at a table read yes. that we sat next to each other. We tend to sit next to each other at the table reads that we just got along. Yep. Like literally. Definitely. I think it was the first episode that you did. Yeah, it was. We started talking. It was just immediate. Mm -hmm. Um, there were no frills. Um, it was just really easy, and it's been that way ever since. Definitely. And it was, it, but it was, it was easy, but it wasn't superficial either. You know, mm -hmm. there was a depth established at a very, um, very early point in our um, relationship. And David, I just want to tell you that you inspired me and have inspired me greatly because of your empathy and your sensitivity. Mm -hmm. um, it's been something that. As an artist, um, as a human being, I feel like I could use more of, you know, I feel like the world could use more of your uh, sympathetic ear and uh, empathetic heart. And uh, it's just something that I feel when I watch you as an artist, it, um, it's what compels me to you. you Thank know? you, man. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much. That, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, as an artist, uh, something that I... Uh, am still discovering, you know, is uh, what I can fully bring to the table. But uh, it's always reassuring and, and good to hear when I have, uh, you know, people that I respect and, and respect their work have to say about me. So, uh, I don't know about all this fucking is shit. Is it too much driving? Time? Yeah. yeah. Right. I don't know about all this yeah. shit. Well, we could do the living room. Yeah, we're going to do the living room. All right. We're going to move to the living room. Just one second. All right, we're back. Now we're inside, not as much noise, just the um, dishwasher. Should I turn that off? No, it's all right. <laughs> Hold on, maybe. Let me hear what it sounds like. Hold on one second, one second. Now we're good, now we're good. All we're right, good we're now. back, no dishwasher. No, no nothing. No nothing, just two guys on a couch. Hey, you know it's comfy. Yeah. <laughs> and an orange light. And an orange, strange orange light. Um... Yeah, so, so yeah, that's, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to um, talk to you. And um, I did some research on you, obviously, for this. And, uh, you know, we've had our many talks um, yeah. on set and uh, just hanging out here at this couch a couple of times and, you know, our own little creative pr pursuits. And um, I, I didn't know that you started acting so young. I, I read that you started acting at three. I mean, yeah, I, I, I've i been doing, <clears throat> strangely enough, I've been doing, like, weird staged things for a long time. And then, like, growing up as a kid, like, in elementary school and then into uh, middle school, and then um, I didn't go to really regular high school, but in the high school years, all of that time I was doing theater mm -hmm. um, in the various uh, uh, states that I was living in at the time. Wherever I was at the time, I was always, like, getting involved in... Black box theater, children's theater, community theater, any, any sort of uh, whatever was going on. I, I tended to kind of gravitate towards that. Um, but yeah, it has been, I guess, a, a thing for, for me for quite some time. Before the TV stuff started, for sure. For like pretty much as long as you can remember? You've always uh, been into it? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I mean, growing up, I did sports. I feel like like most kids do at least one year of or whatever, just through school or whatever. So you know, I did like soccer and baseball and basketball. My my dad was um, was sort of like a sports guy too. So I think there was like a, a kind of, and I was the firstborn in my family. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there might have been like a um, just a trial run, you know, see if I if I if I took to anything. I liked I liked them, but it just wasn't. Um, you know, I looked at it socially. I, I didn't really take it seriously ever. I, I you know, um, didn't feel the need to keep up with any of it and stuff. So yeah, I don't know. I just I early on kind of subconsciously even knew that I wasn't gonna go that way. Um, but you knew you were gonna get into the arts. Not I wouldn't say right off the bat. Like I I I didn't say necessarily. Oh, I don't like sports, therefore I uh, I must get into the arts. Yeah. I, I I think I just sort of naturally. Um, I can't even really, I can't really think of the time really that, that made me really want to do theater. I know I've always loved movies okay. um, as a kid. So, you know, I think there was a point in my childhood where I started wondering what it'd be like 
uh, to do a movie or be in a movie or what does that mean? You know, and how is it done? And then, you know, once they started making DVDs, they started putting all these like bonus features on DVDs. So then I would watch movies and I'd watch like making ofs mm -hmm. on the bonus, you know, features and stuff like that. And then that really started piquing my interest. And then I started looking at, I sort of started looking at acting differently. Um, because all the plays and musicals that I did, while they were fun and, and really cool to be a part of and stuff, they weren't necessarily stories I was like super interested in. Um, I more so looked at it as a way to make friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. But once I started watching, you know, cool movies that I really, really took to, like, you know, um, The Goonies and eventually like Star Wars and Indiana Jones, old James Bond movies, all these adventure movies that I just kind of... Um, liked I, I started thinking of like well you know if I'm gonna do this thing that I do in theater I, you know if I start like acting and pretending that I'm these people and stuff I want to do it in ways I want to do it and like mm -hmm. stories I want to be a part of that I find really cool and exciting you know and so then my my kid brain started thinking like I think the only way to do that really is to eventually do like TV and movies mm -hmm. to kind of feel that but um Lord of the Rings eventually was like the biggest influence in that way because I really really did my research on like how that movie was made mm -hmm. and uh, the experience that the cast had doing that movie um, and that sort of did something to me that like <clears throat> I, I've had and uh, until this day of just wanting my own experience um, like that mm -hmm. and for whatever for whatever whatever reason that experience really sold me I was mm -hmm. like, that's something I want to do. All that stuff, you know. Um, and so I'm here, you know, doing it and trying to do and have my own experience doing that, having that adventure that I saw. Um, theater was just a um, more immediate means of doing that, mm -hmm. you know. So that was that was kind of, um, that was then the path that I started, like, making for myself. And I, like, started really seeing other things other aspects is obsolete because I sort of knew this this road I wanted to go down. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, and it just snowballed from there, you know. And luckily, I had supportive supportive family who they were just as curious as I in, into what the prospect of 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 trying the TV and film thing would be. Mm -hmm. And so then I just I like I uh, auditioned for a local agent in Atlanta, which is where I was living at the time, and. They happened to have a pretty um, successful market in the southeast for TV and film. It was local, it was smaller, but it was good, and it was like happening. There was st stuff happening, or you could drive to a neighboring state like North Carolina, which there was a lot of stuff going on at the time there. Um, and uh, that was what I did. That was how I started, and then eventually that led to a meeting with an agency out here through an Atlanta mm -hmm. connection, and. Um, Eventually, I assigned with an agent here, and then that's, you know. But it was funny because every every step of that process like was kind of like, well, let's see what happens. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens next. Oh, yeah. cool. Oh, and well, now we're in LA. Okay. Well, yeah. let's stay here for a month and see what happens now. And so like that went on and on for years, basically. Okay. And I didn't immediately move here. I was I would I would come for like a month or two, depending on what was going on. Mm -hmm. There was nothing really happening. We we would leave and. Um, I homeschooled, um, well, sort of homeschooled. I, I um, uh, after eighth grade, for basically starting high school, um, I actually landed this 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 job um, for Disney XD called Aaron Stone, and so uh, that really put you know kind of a stop to any any ideas of me wanting to go to like a regular high school which mm -hmm. maybe at some point I did want to do because I had all these friends and we were all going to graduate together to mm -hmm. high school and it would have been cool to to have that experience I never had that experience um, because I ended up going to Toronto Canada to film this show mm -hmm. and uh, because of that I ended up doing programs in high school basically where you would um, if you were in town, you would meet once a week, you would do the tests, you'd get the homework, and then you would spend the rest of the week doing the work at home and stuff. Um, and so then that, 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 that became the way I did school. It was more of like get the work done, 
get stay you know good with your grades and mm-hmm. then and and then graduate and go to the next grade and do it all over again. I didn't have the social anything. Mm-hmm. I didn't go to homecoming and games or anything like that. Um, but instead, I was doing like this acting thing, um, and then so that would became like a triangle between Atlanta, Toronto, and and L.A. Okay. And then eventually, I moved to L.A. Um, after a while of of doing that commuting thing, it just kind of became more of a a, a chore. Then uh, it just it made less and less sense to live in Atlanta, just based on how things were going for me. Um, and so we did. We moved, and I've been here since then. But uh, yeah, it's been an interesting um, ride, to say the least. How do you? Um, there's a lot of questions I got from that. Yeah. Um, well, one, the I first gave you, one. I gave you a little bit. I just yeah, took you on a little you just summary. You told me the whole ride. Yeah. Um, that was not a summary. <laughs> it was a brief summary, actually. <laughs> that was actually. not a summary. <laughs> definitely not a brief summary. Believe it or not. How are you going to call a summary brief? I don't know. That was as brief as I could have made. Brief summary. <laughs> Let's go to log line. Yeah. Um, or synopsis. Um, okay. My first question is: How old were you when you first fell in love? Well, I see that those, those Dragon Ball Z tapes. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll talk about that. Mm-hmm. How old were you when you first uh, fell in love with the um, the um, the behind the scenes of like how the movies get made? Uh, I think I was. 10, okay. 11, 12, you, somewhere in there. Do you remember what movie that first got your attention in that way? Uh, I do. I know. I know all of the movies that I were that I was really doing that with was like two. It was like. Anything in 2001, 2002, 2000, like early 2000s, mm-hmm. that was like where it started for me okay. um, with the behind the scenes stuff. So anything, like I remember it was Lord of the Rings, it was a- any action movie ever that I like bought or, or rented at Blockbuster, I would watch the behind the scenes, um, like movie, random movies, um, obviously Lord of the Rings. I remember Mortal Kombat was one. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, it just, it was, and Last Samurai was another one, Gladiator, um, Master and Commander, which was this movie with Russell Crowe, uh, you know, The Departed eventually. Mm-hmm. I started branching into a little more, like, serious movies like that, and um, Scorsese ended up being pretty cool. But I, I also grew up with a lot of Spielberg, so I watched, you know, like, E.T. and... Um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on, on everything that he's done. He did Jurassic Park, right? Jurassic Park, yeah, yeah there was one. Um, Jurassic Park with the VHS. Okay. But um, I eventually watched the special features on that. X-Men, the first X-Men, when uh-huh. it came out, the very first X-Men live yeah, action. I watched a lot, of, uh, a lot of behind the scenes on that because I really enjoyed Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Um, and that was another thing too, like an an aspect of like the, this training that that you would go through for specific things, and I I don't know, you know, it's just that's another like little layer that I really enjoyed about um, watching those like making ofs. You know? mm-hmm. Said at that time didn't really make any sense to me. I also was trying to piece all that together and like, because you only really see certain aspects, you know. But anyway, it's interesting because, uh, and it's something I've noticed. And I guess I didn't really, I wasn't able to put a name to it until you just went on that spiel Mm -hmm. that you're calling a brief summary, is um, how interested you, and I think this is, you know, part of what makes you such an interesting artist and what will propel you forward in your career, um, is how interested you are in the process. Yeah. You know, the actual, I mean, because, you know, a lot of people in any profession um, or just any field of life are really just a lot of us are focused on the end result. Yeah. You know, and it's really the true masters that understand that no, you know, the value is in the process and the journey. Right. And all those small specific, but so valuable, um, the details required, Mm -hmm. you know, um, to make a great piece of art or to make 
a great jump shot or to make a great meal or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. make a great mm -hmm. wine. It's, mm -hmm. it's all those tiny twists and turns. Totally. And little steps here or there that if you misstep, if you don't step far enough, if you step too far, everything falls apart, mm -hmm. you know? So to have that awareness at such a young age, where it is, that's, it's just really interesting because then you also put that with, you know, the mindset that you were describing over that journey, mm -hmm. you know, when you were going from Atlanta to Toronto to LA, where mm -hmm. it was like, okay, we're here now. Mm -hmm. What's gonna happen next? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's gonna happen next? Mm -hmm. For for me, it would it would feel like uh, a person with a brain like that would kind of go crazy, you know, <laughs> because you know you understand the process, you see right. that there's a process involved, but being an actor, you know, a lot of times it is just like, oh, well, you know, okay, having that discipline to say okay, well, what's going to happen next? I right. know something's going to happen, right. but what is it going to be? With the mindset still of knowing how important and, and essential process is, mm -hmm. how, you know, that seems like a very mature mindset to have as, as a kid. Thank you, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I will say um, this, this industry uh, is actually incredibly a social, social one. Mm -hmm. um, and as an actor on a set, you, it's a social job. You're, you're working with so many different departments every day, talking about all these things that they need from you and, and, and that you need to, um, by knowing what they need from you, kind of incorporate into your um, everyday thing. With that being said, the first show I did, I started at 14, but I'm still- Aaron Stone. Aaron Stone. Mm -hmm. I was 14, then I turned 15. I was, I was almost 16 by the time the whole thing was basically done. Okay. Um, but, uh, it was like a two year thing, but I was still working with, you know, these professional adults mm -hmm. who have been doing this for X amount of time every day in that social manner. Um, mind you, I wasn't working 12 hours at the time cause I was younger, but I was right. still working at least, I was working at least, um, I think nine and a half was it. It was, I think it was eight and then it becomes nine or something. I forget, I forget the actual, but it was, it was limited and I would pumpkin as they call it. Um, pumpkin pumpkin is the is the is the sort of set term which like is a Cinderella? call back to some Cinderella yeah. stroke of midnight you have to yeah. go yeah so they call it pumpkin um, and so they would have to pull I would hard out every night hard out and they would have to get me out of there but I was still for those two years like really kind of rubbing off of rubbing off with people that that were very cultured and and um, interesting people that did not actually really treat me like a kid because mm. I was working these hours with them um, day in, day out. Um, mm -hmm. And there weren't really many other kids on that set. And I, I have a theory that like ever since then, I, I sort of started like rapidly kind of advancing like mentally and stuff like that. And then also I think combining that with just the notion again that um, for some reason, I just, I, I, I always just knew that I wanted to do the acting thing. Mm -hmm. you know? So like I really just committed all my focus to that, mm -hmm. um, and still do, you know, to this day. Really, there are other, uh, there are other things going on in my life, but but acting has been sort of the the um, the engine. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Music is another thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. music is is right there too. And funnily, funnily enough, like music has been there for basically as long as acting, because I did a lot of musical theater growing up. Then I did choir at a point. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was I, I was doing regular vocal lessons on the side mm -hmm. because of all the musical theater that I did. So I was singing even when I wasn't doing the plays or rehearsals or anything like that. I was still doing vocal training and stuff like that. So yeah, I did a lot of that. Um, but you know, there's just a different there's a different, um, and I think for anyone, everyone um, who is in an art or anything, there's just a different way you express yourself within each. Mm -hmm. um, like outlet and I think the way I do it with the way I express myself and um, the way I feel acting and being on a set for some reason is my most comfortable um, music almost is more intimate and more um, like mm. my own thing you mm -hmm. know I don't necessarily feel the need to share mm -hmm. um, with the acting I, I almost feel like it's a way of my communication to to people acting yeah that's interesting yeah, the last couple of people that I uh, spoke to are um, both actresses, but both incredibly um, talented mm. uh, musically as well. 
And it, it's interesting because um, it doesn't, this doesn't seem to be the case for you, but they were um, talking about how, you know, music was what real or singing at least was what really got them into performing. Yeah. And into the arts. And then acting kind of took over. Mm -hmm. And both of them, you know, um, currently are pursuing, you know, their, their music mm -hmm. right now. And I just, I just thought it was interesting because it was like, these are two people that understand at a very deep fundamental level that the music is their true calling. Yeah. But they put it aside for a long time for yeah. whatever reason or reasons. Mm -hmm. And now they're picking it back up and it's just, you know, it's interesting, you know, how we resist um, what our truest nature is. Right. Where it seems like for you, you, you did, the, you just kind of just fell into it. Mm -hmm. And we're fine with it. You know, there's no panic, no anxiety around it. Um, you just went with it. Yeah, man. I mean, I think in a lot of ways, yeah, there, there has, I, I have a certain amount of confidence with, um, with acting in general and, and my abilities and, um, I like the challenge and the, the, uh, the prospect of something more difficult coming up next for me and all that stuff, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, it's funny. I think there's music in acting mm. and I think, um, I think there's a rhythm to acting. I think there's a pace to acting. I think it always changes with everything you're doing. But like, I, 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 I find a lot of actors are also mu musical. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think those strain in some f weird way go hand in hand for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, for me, I just I, I think I um, I think I just I think acting has has more tied to it that I really really find intriguing, like storytelling, which mm -hmm. is like one of the biggest. Even with music, I'm still telling stories. It's like storytelling is a big is a big fundamental thing for me um, with like I think anything I do really acting just seems like the best method mm -hmm. with, I mean that's always been the case with uh, storytelling being of, of such value to you yeah yeah definitely yeah. definitely yeah yeah I think everything I've ever done um, that I've liked to yeah. do for myself has always been about either being lost in a story or Telling a story or a co combination, telling a story that I then can then get lost in, or whatever you know, I can apply that to basically anything in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I feel like you know your journey up until this point has been a pretty incredible story. Um, you've traveled all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you've experienced ups and downs in life, and um, right now, you know, you're working on a hit TV show. Yeah. Um, so going back to um, you know the story that that you've lived, how do you feel that? Um, so I'm always curious about how this affects kids. Mm. All the traveling you did, um, young, affected you as a storyteller, and and affected your concept of story because you you lived overseas for a little bit, right? For a little bit, yeah, yeah. in UK. Uh, yeah, I, well, you know, yes, I did, we did. My, mm -hmm. my family, we lived there for a year, but I, I kind of ruled that out because I was so young. Okay. Um, okay. in terms of influence, you know, okay. maybe it has some sort of weird subconscious one, but, uh, I, but I lived in, I lived in Taipei, Taiwan for about like eight months. Okay. Um, and I was like 10, uh, turning 11 at the time. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think moving in, I, I, lo I lived in way more farm. Far many state, far too many states. Like that was like the one thing that we did. I would live in a state for how many states have you lived in? Uh, um, Atlanta, Atlanta, Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. Austin, Providence, um, Los Angeles. Now that's five. So five now. Okay. But every single one was about uh, like. It would either be four or five years okay. in one place, um, uh, and my 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 younger brother and my younger sister were were born in two different states there, um, and I think I think one strange thing that I've also like realized about all of that this sort of chopped up kind of um, like these fragments of kind of experiences in different locations, different regions, different people involved, different. Uh, environments entirely mm -hmm. was um, 
there was always a point where I would hit where I would have to kind of reset everything, do it all over, start from scratch, and learn people in a different way mm -hmm. based on where I was living now, you know. Um, Austin felt very different than Atlanta, Georgia, and Providence, Rhode Island felt very different than anywhere in the South. Um, you know, uh, it, so it was just kind of, I think it became a really weird subconscious uh, learning lesson in a lot of weird ways for me to uh, adapt to different classes of, of kids and be able to recognize who, who I'm going to get along with and who I won't. Um, because then that, that required me to know myself a certain amount mm -hmm. to be able to figure out who I'm going to mesh with. Um, and there's always different characters in the class, you know? Um, the class is basically a cast of characters, um, with, including the teacher. So I think, I don't know, I, I think I was always looking at everything as, in these weird ways. Um, and it all just kind of stacked up. Um, but I, I think it, I think, I think with that, with all these weird sort of not very normal, um, paths that I went down, uh, I think it all really affected me, um, mm. and my performances and, and what, how my instincts with a character or instincts of, of, you know, looking at a script. But, um, but I think I did a lot of, I did, I did a lot of learning and, and training and classes too that that helped me you know kind of apply that you know mm -hmm. it wasn't just like this like natural like knowledge or anything like that I, th I just think I had a I think I have a very vivid imagination <laughs> and I just needed ways to to get it out and and like you know also an, an area an industry where I can meet people who like to do this too mm -hmm. you know? so yeah I'm gonna stop real quick yeah because it's too hot. Another, uh, like another summary. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta cut into those summaries. Yeah. I don't want to cut into those summaries. I like them. All right. You're, uh, you're very well spoken. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you were talking about, you know, how growing up all over the place, you know, mm -hmm. you've definitely taken tidbits from all over the country um, and that you also used, you know, well, you had classes. And you had training that helped you. Mm -hmm. um, like later on, when that. I got when I got more into it, I obviously took like classes. I just wanted to stress that to make it seem like I didn't have that it wasn't just like all this natural instinct that got me through. I thought it, it was. was. No, it definitely. I wasn't. thought it was. No, I just thought no, you were no, no. natural, Dave. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you literally just came out of your mother's womb and just started acting. And you started quoting, you know, sonnets. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. I no, Stella did. Adler, and why not? No, no, that's not at all. I I took a lot of training and and like the, all the theater really like helped me. Yeah. Mhm. Mm I mean, I got really uncomfortable. I re got really comfortable in front of people. I mean, I I got really comfortable doing live shows. I got really into um, uh, kind of feeding off of the energy that the audience would give you and mm -hmm. being able to steer the show um, based on the reactions and based on how the night's going. Also, being able to kind of play with variation of how to do the character on any given night because mm -hmm. you know you're not matching anything and you're the one doing the character so who, you know no everyone's just gonna watch you you know what i mean mm -hmm. like you can kind of do whatever you want they're just gonna ride your your journey with you yeah um and that's cool that like that vibe of of being of of having that control and knowing everyone's watching you um do whatever it is you're about to do is I exciting and there is an adrenaline that I think you sent. You get the same thing like in front of camera. It's a similar thing. It's the similar before they start rolling. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so you know. I I think uh, everyone who does this and like truly wants to do it has like a very similar like need for that. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and usually both of uh, all of them have done both have done theater and you know. Um, and if they haven't, they should. Because mm -hmm. I think I think most people will find that correlation if you do enough of it. But yeah. So do you find that you get you get the same rush when you're on set on like take two or three versus um, when you're on stage? 
No, it's 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 just a moment. It's a moment that happens like when you walk out of the wing mm-hmm. uh, on a stage, and it's the moment that they say action. That's that is the correlation yeah, yeah, yeah. right there. Yeah. Um, um, that sort of breath in or breath out, whatever it is for you. I think for me, I I don't know. It's 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 that it's that that jump before before you go on. Mm-hmm. Um, that I think is like the uh, the adrenaline thing. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that that was all I meant by that. I think that that there is a, I think it's a very similar feeling for me anyway. Um, from what I can recall from the theater I did, you know, that's that was kind of how it felt before going on for like a big number. Yeah. that we've been practicing for months and don't want to screw up right now, you know? Or uh, a scene I'm about to go out in and it's about to be a very long, sort of complex dialogue scene with with monologues and words and, mm-hmm. and making sure all the beats are there and making sure everything's there. So, you know, depending on what it is. But it's all still the same. same it's that fear mixed with excitement thing. Mm-hmm. You know? Are you, is that what drew you at first like the first time you got to take were you did you even feel that the first time no yeah. no no that came later when i think i was taking it more seriously mm-hmm. um <clears throat> no but but you develop it um i think there was always a, a love for it though because that was obviously what led me to take it more seriously was um the passion for it or the the desire for it to be good mm-hmm. or for it to to come off well or to, to you know really put your work into it but um no, that came later. Um, I, I again, I I don't, I can't really remember exactly when. You know, there is one play though I'm remembering like right now that was like c- kind of the first real actory experience I ever had. Um, it was just this black box theater in Georgia, in this small city in Georgia, and the whole cast. There was about eight of us, but there was I think uh, twenty characters, eight actors. So we all had multiple characters. Mm-hmm. So the process of doing that play took over, took about a summer to do. We had um, months of, about two months or so of, of rehearsals, and then dresses, or texts and then dresses, and then um, a couple weeks of, um, of plays at the end. But um, that whole experience was just so great because I, I was so invested in it. I was so into the idea of coming in every day and, being with all these random people that I then ended up knowing very well and um and and then when you're doing the plays it was just this hectic thing of like ripping clothes off putting mm-hmm. a new outfit on running on stage and making sure you don't miss a cue and I think that experience and how hard that was but yet how much I really enjoyed it and then at the end really just was so proud of me and and everyone involved um yeah, I, I think maybe that was actually something pivotal for me, being a part of that little play. Mm-hmm. You know, um, How old were you? Uh, I was probably like 13. Okay. 12, 13. Two, three characters? I had four. Four characters? I had four characters. Wow. Because all of my characters were supporting characters in about two scenes each. Mm-hmm. Maybe, or one scene even. Some, some, actually, it was one was just one scene. Um, but yeah, I had, a, I had like a lot of changes because yeah. of that. we had this small dressing room with just like this divider for the girls and boys and, and it was just very um, like <laughs> basic and, and simple um, and the set was minimalist, you know, like usually the set, there was nothing on the stage but our set, but our props and mm-hmm. just minimal set pieces and like, you know, um, but it was all just so cool. It was just, <laughs> we were just happy to get through the play when and get on stage when we need to be on stage and all that but um yeah anyway that was that was i guess maybe that was you know a key moment there and that was also not a musical that was just a play yeah which also kind of made it feel it grounds it different and and, um and the the theater was very classic black box theater Mm -hmm. um like uh 99 seats yeah, and something like that, and, yeah. and the theater is a little, uh, the the audience is a little more elevated than the stage, so yeah. it's kind of like a pit looking thing, yeah. and yeah. very um, very old school kind of um, venue that we were at, um, which I also loved. We were we rehearsed at the same place the whole. We were in that theater the entire time. Um, yeah, man. I don't know. It was like just all those little. You get all those little memories from it, and um, 
that's a that's a fond experience that's a great experience to yeah. consider a fond one you know because I probably up until that point you know you as a kid that just liked acting were probably just you were in love with the process you know you yeah. loved it you just mm -hmm. because you like to do it mm -hmm. and then you had this experience which was I mean, you probably had to create a backstory for each character. You yeah, know, you had to yeah. really dive into each one of those yeah. those people. Um, and then, you know, when you're in the moment on stage, all those, you know, uh, costume changes mm -hmm. and, you know, just everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Not forgetting your lines, mm -hmm. you know, know people talk differently, mm -hmm. you know, different mannerisms. Yeah, we had we had different accents going on and stuff like that for different, yeah. That makes, that that's like the line, I feel like, unless there was a time after that you feel was more demanding where right. you realized, okay, this is a job. Right. This is a vocation. Right. Which that did eventually come. But um, yeah, you're, no, you're right. I mean, it was, it was kind of like, a, I guess the first challenge maybe that I actually had to kind of step up to. Um, um, and you know, it wasn't, it was, the play wasn't actually anything deep, you know, mm -hmm. it was, it was kind of just a perfect, um, sort of skeleton for the process. Like mm -hmm. you were bringing up, it was a perfect skeleton for the process. The, the play was based on a kid's book, um, called, uh, Wind in the Willows. Mr. Oh Mr. yeah. Mr. Toad and, yeah, yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. And I played, we had, <laughs> we, you play, uh, we had an adult play, Mr. Toad, actually, uh -huh. um, I played all these supporting characters. I played like a train conductor at one point. I played a policeman in one scene. I played, um, mm, what else did I play? I played, I think I played a chef or something at one time. Uh -huh. And then I played like a rat or something in another scene. So it was like all I was waiting for the animal. Yeah, it was a rat. Well, they were, yeah, they were all kind of animals per se like but not you you didn't really know right. what they were like right. the policeman had like dog ears and stuff like that so i was always kind of an animal but um really basic like costumes and stuff like that we barely had makeup on or anything like that like just you know uh we didn't have it was <laughs> it was very we have a dog face huh you have a dog face i have a dog face you don't really need makeup for that i don't need it i no, guess it's not it's a cute dog okay all right yeah. I'll, I'll take that yeah. Um, it's not a mastiff. Don't <laughs> it's worry a mastiff. about that. It's a medium sized dog. Maybe. It's like your dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> Cute little bulldog. Which I'm so glad you, you, you made that mention because I wanted to ask you all right, we're going to jump a little bit yeah, to uh, the movie you did, The Lifeguard. Okay. Yeah. And um, because you're over here talking about animals, I was watching that movie mm -hmm. and uh, I was watching you in that movie, I was mm -hmm. watching your scenes in that movie. And I was really focusing on, you know, what you... Because you were so much skinnier. Yeah, I know. You know, and I, that was a choice, correct? Um, no? It was sort of a choice, but it also kind of just became a thing because of just the way I was... I was like 18. And, yeah. And I was just... I kind of didn't really care at that yeah. point. I was like... Just I was degenerate. living off of Subway and, and Boston Market. You were like and, the kid. And I was, I was like the kid. Yeah. I was honestly that kid That's what at that time. Doing, yeah. I, was at, I was that kid at that yeah. time. Yeah, it was, not, it was no joke. I was more method for that role than I ever realized I was, in <laughs> retrospect. <laughs> I was that guy. At See, that the process is just so natural for you. Yeah, but uh, no, what, what, what did you want to get to? No, I was going to ask if you um, incorporated any animal work into the preparation. Because there were moments in there... While I was watching your body and the way you were moving and also the way you were looking at things, mm -hmm. where I was like, oh, I wonder if he, you know, employed any animal techniques. Because I'm definitely seeing some very primal right. um, qualities here. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, um, I, li I really like the aspect of, impl of, of implementing animal work into things. You know, the, the first one that comes to mind for me, the famous one, is Anthony Hopkins with... Silence of the Lambs. He incorporated a snake mm -hmm. in his performance. You even lift um, when you said Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Silence of the Lambs. Uh, no, so, but he, his he, process he, is so natural. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, he's never had taken an acting class in his life. Look at that. I know I this have. Is just... I did. I did in Atlanta. No, I did in Atlanta. Man, I lying. swear. I swear. He's I did. He's never lived in Atlanta for two years. <laughs> he was born in L.A. He was born years. in Burbank. No, no, no. <laughs> Um, the Warner Brother lot. I was born. I was, just born, I was born down the road, and, and here stage I am. Stage 22. Yeah, I was still born in that stage. Uh, uh, now you, I've lost my train of thought. I lost my train of thought. Animals. Animals, Animals. Animals. yeah. No, but actually, it's funny enough, with Lifeguard, there was no real... I know what you're saying with the primal thing, because I, I actually looked at it more as a stance, 
and a, a way I was carrying myself. That um, that character was like really vulnerable, but um, was convinced he um was doing a good job of looking tough. Mm-hmm. You know, so like there was sort of like a weird. He didn't really look that threatening, like you said. I I was like skinny as fuck, and oh sorry, can I curse? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was you know skinny as fuck and and. Uh, underweight on top of that i mean i was i was i'm a skinny dude but i was definitely underweight at the time and uh my i might de- get my demeanor want i wanted it to be kind of like i i was invincible mm-hmm. even though i was far from that so mm-hmm. you end up with this sort of weird um with this weird thing going on with this weird stance and this weird um and the way yeah you know i really wanted the character to be intense i felt like he'd been through some stuff and um so I implemented a lot of eye kind of eye work. Mm. I was mm-hmm. using my eyeballs a lot in, mm-hmm. in ways that uh, I felt worked, and and that again going back to music was all in the timing of of a lot of that stuff, mm-hmm. um, which was an interesting um, pro- like thing to do. Another cool thing about that director Liz Garcia, who directed that movie, um, she was a fan of the silent take. So every, with every scene, almost every scene, every scene that mattered, every scene that had you know stuff going on in it, we would um, always have w- at least one take mm. where we would do the entire scene, every beat, everything that happens, blocking, boom, 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 everything. No one says a thing. Mm. So, but you still have to give your all. Yeah. So you're still going through every emotion, everything that you're gonna feel in that scene, every reaction, whatever. Just don't say a word. Um, and that's, she would film it. But she'd film it, yeah. Because mm. she, in editing, in editing, she would sometimes, if she didn't want someone to be talking in a moment where she was like, "Oh, you know, actually, that moment doesn't need anything said. Mm-hmm. I'll just take a look." She has a whole take of looks, basically, um, which I thought was kind of an interesting yeah. way, you know. And but because of that, I actually ended up starting to react to that like a class. So I'm like, "Oh, sweet, silent take. All right, mm-hmm. here we go. This is gonna be this is gonna be really tough. Mm-hmm. I have no idea I'm gonna do this scene, but here we go. Action. All right." Mm-hmm. I, I mean, just I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what this is gonna look like. Yeah, but there was something to that, you know. Well, I was I was gonna ask, was it uh, like obviously it's, it's difficult for a variety of reasons, but um, did you find that it was? I don't want to say more rewarding. It's it's different. It's different. But there's there's just something, you know. I know at least when I'm acting where. You know, when the words are not being spoken, you know, or just even in life, mm-hmm. um, in life, you know, when you're really experiencing a moment with someone mm-hmm. and no words are needed, right. you know, it actually ruins it. Right. Um, I find that to be so much more gratifying. Yeah, totally. You know, because it's like, it's like the music. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. it's that silence that it's it's not it's it's full. Yeah. It's full and you know it's vibrational. Is that a word vibrational? It's vibrating. Yeah. Vibrational maybe where I don't yeah. think so. Um but it's so compelling, right. you know, it, it's what a lot of people say, oh, you know, good acting is not when people are speaking, it's right. when they're listening and not saying anything. Sure, sure, so sure, sure. That I feel was probably a masterclass. Yeah, you know, I for mean you. It, it did feel and and also with that movie in particular, I had ne- I, I have never fully felt as intimidated as I did in that in that movie. Um, not in the, only, on those takes, or just in general? Just in general, really, because I felt like the the most inexperienced person there, um, just in terms of credits and and kind of qualification mm-hmm. to be there amongst you know actors like Kristen Bell and Martin Starr mm-hmm. and Mamie Gummer um, and. Uh, Josh Harto, even who's Liz Garcia's husband, who um, has actually a pretty extensive resume himself in terms of acting. He now more so produces, but I mean, all these people were just so, and they were so relaxed in it and so natural mm-hmm. with how they gave their performance. The natural aspect was was like kind of key for me too. I'm like, whoa, like these, you know, we mm. would do a we would do a table read or we would do a, a um, just a little rehearsal and. I would I wouldn't even fully know when they're starting the scene or not like because they just go right into it. Mm-hmm. There's no difference. Mm-hmm. That was where I first saw that. I was like, oh my god, okay, they're doing the scene. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. And I but I loved it at the same time because it made me really kind of scared the whole time because mm-hmm. I was like, I, wait, what was that? What was that? Oh, you're talking. Okay, you're talking. 
We're talking. We're, we're not. We're not acting right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we're, I, don't, I don't have to be on right now. <laughs> but you know, but there it, was it, no it, putting on in that movie. Yeah, it was, there was just zero putting on. It was very, very just casual, conversational. Um, but I think I think it really I liked being kind of this underdog character there because I. I um I think I probably learned the most on that on that set mm-hmm. um for that month um feeling intimidated uh the whole time you know and 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 feeling the need to step up um yeah well how did you you just got the role from just auditioning Yeah I mean it seemed like a fluke I had been doing pretty okay um Aaron Stone was done Aaron Stone had been done okay. Aaron, Aaron Stone had been done for years at this point Okay um, there was about a two year period there where things weren't, I, I wasn't doing much actually. Um, and I was just here in Los Angeles auditioning and, mm-hmm. and that was my life. And, you know, I would, I would have fun with my friends, hang out with my friends and audition, go to callbacks, hopefully book something. That was, mm-hmm. that was my existence and still is, still mm-hmm. will be at some point again. It's all of our existence. Yeah. But, um, Anyway, that was that was going on, and then I, I happened to hit a good pocket of stuff happening for me. I booked a few things here and there, and um, Lifeguard was the last one um, that kind of came into this little small batch of lucky that I was experiencing. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I got the call. I just went in for the audition, got the call, and, and then I found myself on a flight going to shoot in Pittsburgh. And uh, you didn't. There was no callback. So that's actually interesting. That's tape? actually an interesting story. I I auditioned in person and I ended up uh, because Liz was already in Pittsburgh. She wanted to do callbacks with me specifically, so I sent in one tape and then she was like, "I wanna, I I wanna, I wanted to see him in person, but I can't see him in person, so let's Skype him." Mm-hmm. So I ended up doing two producer sessions, weird kind of, over Skype at like nine or ten o'clock at night here in my apartment. Um, talking to Liz Garcia over Skype with my headphones in, reading a scene with her over Skype, which was the weirdest thing. I I I, I didn't I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to look at the camera. I didn't know how to. I ended up just looking at the camera, which felt weird because then it's like I I'm just talking to my lap my laptop. <laughs> but then at the at the same time, there's this woman on the other end debating whether or not she wants to give me a job. Yeah. And I'm this is my. This is how I have to prove to her <laughs> right now over Skype. Yeah. This is how I have to prove to her that I'm worth it. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> Just a weird um, situation to be in that it came down to Skype <laughs> and my connect internet connection. <laughs> and w- hopefully it won't lag. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But anyway, it's all, like that e- everything. Of none episode. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you seen that? I don't. I don't. Shop? I mean, I've seen Master of None, but I don't know if I've seen what you're talking about. When he's in the coffee shop, I'm not sure. When he has the it's the black uh, the black virus movie, and he's like, no, the sickening. Oh yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Pew, pew, pew. He's in the coffee shop. <laughs> Aziz on sorry yeah. man. He's the best. Yeah. yeah, man. He's really you know. Yeah, that was that was a, that's a. That's an extreme example. Yes, of yes. That, but it's not uh, unheard of. So that's really cool. That that's how you got it. But I will say, like, that movie, like, has, has is still, um, I think, the one of the most, uh, has, had, has had one of the biggest impacts on me so far, just because of um, just how, how it all went down. How it all felt kind of like this, like, very quickly accelerating um, snowball rolling down the mm-hmm. mountain that I just suddenly found myself in um and the whole the whole experience was really great i also i was i wasn't really on my phone a lot i remember i kind of made a point of being off the grid Mm -hmm. so it was very much so like i was just i was sort of all in in pittsburgh which is so i mean man oh my god i really i could talk to you forever dude (laughs) um seriously you're you're an interesting cat and I'm, i'm starting to understand a lot more um Snowball, don't forget yeah, that. Yeah. But it's interesting that you said, um, God, all right, Snowball, I just don't want to rem- I, yeah, 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 remind yeah. me, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I want to know how you personally felt at your age about the relationship between your character and uh, Kristen's character. Okay, okay, okay. But okay. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. it's just interesting that you said you weren't on your phone, you know, mm-hmm. intentionally, because, you know, now that was, you know, 
some years back. Yeah, like but f- four, four. Four years like four back, years right? Ago now. And even then, people still had, you know, we were pretty addicted to our phones, even then. We were, yeah. even then. But now it's worse. Mm-hmm. And especially with teenagers. Mm-hmm. But there were, I don't remember really seeing much like texting or noses in a phone yeah. in that film. And, it, you know, it was the type of environment when, where, where that's what you would expect. Because, you know, it's like suburbia, right. Pittsburgh, totally. summertime, it was. nothing's it was going on, yeah. it's yeah. hot. Yeah. These kids go to this pool exactly. to hang out, they yeah. drink, yeah. They, sk- they don't, you know, really do anything. No, you know? they don't. So that's what you would expect, and you would assume that these kids would just be on Instagram, or no. just yeah. be constantly in their phone, but the fact that... I just, you just make me now realize that there was there were really no, no phones, phones present. Yeah, you're right. Actually, I didn't even realize that about the film, but you're right. It kind of brings it, and you know, I think that may, I don't know if that was a, a directorial choice no or a idea. writing choice. I don't. I don't actually know because it would take it back to it'd be interesting if you because did she also write it? Yeah. If if you could ask her because it would take it back to the time when. Um, Kristen's character right. was a child right. in that town. Right. When they didn't have phones. They didn't have things. You know? Yeah, they totally, totally. Like a simpler time. Yeah, no, there wasn't a single scene where I was on the phone. In that yeah. Movie. There wasn't a single scene where I was on the phone. Um, I can't think of... Actually, I can think of one, but it was. I don't think it ended up in being in the movie, the scene I'm thinking about. Um, I just realized that. Yeah, it's funny. That really reflected... That, that was the vibe on set, too. I mean, no one was on their phones. No one, no one. The only person who might have been on their phone a bit more was Kristen. But it was more because it seemed like she actually had things to get to. She emails was a movie star. emails and, yeah. and, and calls and that kind of thing. So she yes, she was on her phone. But uh and it kinda worked for that character. Totally. For her character. It, she she had to kind of be in her own world a yeah. little bit. Um and uh so I guess this is a good segue into what you were gonna ask or what you wanted to ask about the relationship there. Yeah. You, you said how did I feel at that age about the relationship? Yeah. That was um like that was the one thing about this movie that I um I was intimidated by. That was mm-hmm. the one thing I was most intimidated by. Luckily, uh, once I got there and once I read the, read the script with her and and the rest of the cast and stuff like that, we ended up having a um most of the cast were in two hotels in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. So we all went to the hotel that um, Kristen was at and Liz was at um, and they were close to downtown. And we all just like took a, a ballroom there and, and did a table read. And after the table read, everyone left. And we had a, uh, a private uh, rehearsal between me and Kristen where we basically just... It was a big rundown of, of like all of the intimacy that would happen. Mm-hmm. And, and all these um, you know, rather <laughs> skimpy scenes that we're, that we're going to do. You know? Scantily clad uh, Scantily, yeah. you know... And and it was all it was all good, you know. Yeah. Like Kristen, Kristen was very very chill about it. Made the whole thing kind of funny and 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 ironic in a weird way. And she was really sarcastic and kind of, um, immediately, you know, everything she did was to immediately make me feel not weird. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I I felt like I was sort of on eggshells because, um, you know, I'm eighteen, turning nineteen at the time. Working with Veronica Mars mm-hmm. slash Sarah Marshall, mm-hmm. from, from, you know, which you know I had seen before, and surreal working with her in this way, and I I just didn't want to do anything in the, through the uh, through the entire shoot that would make me look like the overzealous or, you know, just kind of horny teen. To mm-hmm. be honest, you know, mm-hmm. I was very worried that I was going to come off a little, you know, a little too much of a dog. You know, um, so I, I had to kind of do everything I could to be like overly respectful, yeah. overly um, careful, yeah. you know, uh, uh, with everything. Yeah. And that was hard because of the character I was playing. Yeah. You know, so there was a weird bound. It was a weird line to walk um, on, on that set for me. But at the same time, I think all of that, like um, all of that was sort of needed for, for the whole experience. Yeah. And and again, like I can't stress enough how cool Kristen was the entire time. Like she really, on it, it was all in my head. Like, yeah, she yeah. was completely fine. Yeah, you know, it was just things I was dealing with and and trying to make myself feel comfortable. Um, but I I we we everything was great. There was literally a, never a bad day on that on that set. And maybe that's another reason why I liked that experience. It was just the whole experience was great. But um, 
my opinion on on the relationship of of the movie was I I guess I just looked you at it. You want to tell them what the relationship is if they haven't seen the movie. Right. So so you know one of the key aspects of the movie is this sort of under the table relationship that happens between my character in the movie and Kristen's character, and uh, it's a romance. It's definitely like a full blown fling over a summer, and um, there were a lot of risque sexual scenes in the movie some are on the more graphic side never seen david's ass that much in my life there you go got a I narrow get, behind i get a little naked yeah um Mass and it was it was uh pretty narrow at that point too we'll say nasa tall you know uh, what that means <laughs> no i don't no ass at all <laughs> nasa <Nass> tall <laughs> I didn't have much of anything back then. <laughs> you were then. skinny, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. So look like Zamperino. Yeah, no, man. I was I was running around like riding the air, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on the the gusts of wind. Yeah, um, scaring off crows. But uh, <laughs> you didn't look like that, nah, man. <laughs> no, but uh, I I forget what I was saying. Yeah. Um, just the relationship, that. you know, the older woman, the underage. I looked at the whole thing as this younger male. Yeah, younger younger male with the with the older um well underage, right? Underage, yeah. He was yeah. Under 18. Under No, he's he's Oh yeah, he was. Isn't that why there was yeah, such was, a big he's, deal? He's high school. Mm. Yeah, it's like statutory rape. Yeah, it's statutory rape. Yeah, that's basically yeah. what the whole and the, the, the principal, whole movie was. the teacher, the principal. She's like the vice she is the principal of like the school that they used to go to that she now basically runs. Oh, so they had, they had graduate. They had graduated from that school. That summer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I I, I, I never I never thought it was actually that bad. Like I was always intrigued by it. I think I was all, also like biased because I was intrigued by the aspect of like how it, how would I ever like mm. how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna keep up with Kristen? Mm -hmm. Make this believable. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I think a lot of uh, a lot of people wonder like if those sex scenes were fun or if um, if if I got turned on or whatever during the process. Completely no, because it I was so scared, mm. and also you know again going back to what I was saying earlier, it's a social job. So even in these private scenes, th there is what's called a closed set, which means. The only people present to do these scenes are uh, people who are needed, like camera, sound. Um, that's about it. The director, that's about it. Like, mm -hmm. literally, there's no one else in there. And then there's the actors. Um, so we did have things like that. But, you know, you still need wardrobe coming in mm -hmm. and fixing whatever they need to fix in between. Yeah. You're still wearing something. I wasn't fully naked. I had something to cover front. Cocksock? Basically, like this, it was just this cloth taped to the front, basically, mm. um, that was under my boxers. So, it, so mm. you know, mm -hmm. to make it look like, and the back was open, so mm -hmm. it, did, it was just the, it was just a frontal kind of covering. Um, so you almost had a vagina. Basically, basically, okay. basically, All right. that was essentially, yeah. You can think of it that way if you want. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, it was very interesting, but I needed someone to help me with that. Yeah. So it's not like, it's not like it's a private sexual weird moment that's for some reason on camera between me and Kristen Bell. Yeah. It's it's more of like this um, this blow by blow, frame by frame, choreographed dance that a lot of people need to come in and and tweak, mm -hmm. um, constantly, and you do it for about maybe two hours, and then you kind of try to forget about the whole experience. <laughs> Because I mean, it was just weird. It's just, yeah. it's a very weird thing, and 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 unfortunately, the you're you're also spending energy to keep yourself focused and like, you know, sort of still try to be in the scene. Yeah. But that's very hard. You yeah. know, it's a very hard thing when you when you look over and there's a guy with you know the camera, <laughs> and then there's there's the guy with the there's the boom guy like you know looking at you and looking at his boom and looking at the camera it's just weird it's like you're in a doctor's office or something yeah. it's like that kind of weird it's thing. unnatural it's just an unnatural process so yeah no there's just there's um i would challenge anyone to to get turned on in that environment like i think it'd just be porn stars hey but uh you know 
hooked I up. suppose so. I suppose so. Yeah, that's why they have pills. Yeah, because this is so not... It's just, yeah, it's what you say. It's an unnatural yeah. unnatural environment. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah, scary. It's and then scary. especially when you're working with someone of, of stature, someone with a name. Mm-hmm. You know, it's situations like that where you can ruin your reputation. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's obviously worst case scenario, but still, you know. Yes, it's true. You don't want to be in a weird, awkward situation scene with a veteran actor. Yeah. Ever. Ever. I don't think. I wouldn't ever want that. Um, so there's also an aspect of like just trying to you know be as cool calm and collected as possible yeah the thing. which then again also takes energy and focus to do yeah so you're just kind of you're kind of in this weird zone you know, yeah the whole time but uh yeah no, it, was, it was a learning experience to say the least it was about a week in the scheduling process where we were doing scenes like that yeah. Um, and then wow. no more. And then no more. And then everything else was fine. Everything else was just, you know, regular scene work. But uh, At least you got that week. There was about a week there yeah, where it was just like I was showing up every day doing some weird stuff. Well, no, I mean the week prior. Oh, the week prior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it could yeah. have been the first day. It was not. It yeah, was not. It was, I think it was actually second weekend. Okay. So I'd already been there for like seven or eight days. Yeah. And then we started it up. But um, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I really like that city too. Pittsburgh was a good time. Yeah? Yeah. I'll go back. It's a good time. He's 18. It's a good time. It's hitting the bars. Uh, no, it's just going to, uh, you know, Hard Rock. Right. Hard Rock restaurant. Do you have a Yinza accent? Did you pick up on that? You know, I uh, I, I definitely hung out with locals while I was there. Yeah? <laughs> I was definitely up in the cuts with these suburb people. Yeah. I was... These suburb people. I mean, I was a suburb. I, I grew up in the suburbs, too. So it, for me, it was actually kind of a callback. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was up with these these kids from from um, Green Tree. I think was the area. We were staying in Green Tree. I think shout out Green Tree. Yeah, shout out to Green Tree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if it wasn't Green Tree, it was it was one of the surrounding areas. Which I I'm I'm not gonna remember all the names of the area, all the different little counties and stuff that we went into. But um, uh, yeah, it was just <laughs> yeah, man. All these weird experiences that happen in those little. Uh, Jeff Bridges calls them, you know, every every movie set is like its own little universe mm-hmm. for that time period, however long that may be, and then it, you know goes away and it'll never be, you know, and never come back the same. Yeah, but it's it's that for that point period of time, you know. Last question. On to the next. Man, I just have too many. Um, but we gotta wrap it up, and you gotta get going. Unfortunately, yeah, I'm on a little, but no, whatever. All right, oh, I got to get going too, yeah. but um, damn, I may come back. <laughs> hey, know? we may have come back, different man. clothes on next Let's time. Let's do it. Um, Spice some stuff together. Just really listening to you, it seems like you know you really um, you thrive off of fear. You know. Yeah. Um, um, and you know, I think there there are four main emotions. Was it anger, uh, fear? sadness yep. and like joy mm-hmm. and you know i think the rest stem from those four mm-hmm. <clears throat> but just listening to you speak your relationship with fears is fascinating it you know it it turns you on it, it mm-hmm. gets your gears moving and um what 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 is that it's like even just you know the the part of the process that just you know the pro- the word process scares a lot of people mm-hmm. but that you just dive right in man mm-hmm. like you 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 see a cliff you're jumping mm-hmm. you know there's a bungee cord mm-hmm. attached to you if not you're you're jumping mm-hmm. and you know i'm i'm, I'm there's a, there's an inherent confidence mm-hmm. you know that you have when approaching this fear that i think allows you to um face it in the way that you do but just uh, talk to me a little bit about that relationship because it's really interesting to me. Yeah, man. I, I think uh, I think you're right. I mean, I think sometimes I look at it as um, challenge or, or being able to step up, but there, but with that always comes the fear of failure or or disappointment. It's a big one for me. Um, but I think it also goes back to pain, mm. you know. And um, I think. Um, Fear and pain are really closely associated. Mm-hmm. Um, fear of pain, maybe. Um, fear of loss. Mm-hmm. You know, um, fear of what's to come next, or fear of um, 
doing something wrong mm -hmm. or making a mistake. You know, I just think these are the most powerful, some of the most powerful feelings that um, you can have. Yeah. Um, and I think they, they can be applied to so many different things. Um, even in happiness, you know, there could be some doubt or something, you know. And I think, um, I think every life, within every life, you're going to experience ups and downs and whatnot. And um, even a perfect moment doesn't necessarily last forever, mm -hmm. you know, because that wouldn't be, it wouldn't be really perfect anymore because we would forget what that would mean because it would just be the same thing on and mm -hmm. on and on and on and on. But uh, I think fear of loss, um, which then really comes from love, mm -hmm. is kind of, um, I think, uh, some sort of root for me. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think any, other, any character I ever play in my career, any story I ever write, um, any, any story I'm a part of in some way or another, I think needs to have those elements in it for me to feel like there's something there that's authentic or, or genuine. I don't know where it comes from, you know, I, I, I had, um, I had plenty of um, ups and downs in my own life and, mm -hmm. and there were tumultuous times for sure and there are, there are plenty of aspects in my life that um, probably gave me lots of fear. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of that, that I, that I keep within, keep with me at all times. Um, and I know that acting is one way that I can, uh, I can sort of evoke it without feeling it or mm -hmm. I can, if I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it through somebody else in an entirely different way from my own, but I can still relate or empathize with them, mm -hmm. you know, or parallel them, you know, um, but a parallel is still not the same, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm on the other side, you know, so, uh, yeah, I think there's something to that that I enjoy. I enjoy dancing around the things that maybe give me a hard time. Mm -hmm. you know? um, uh, but even with acting, you dive right into it. Yeah, no, I mean, I you think dance you need with to, it. yeah, you need to commit. If you're going to, if you're going to do that, you need to, you need to jump, you need to dive for it. You need to go for it fully. Otherwise, it won't be the it won't be that experience. Yeah. So if you're gonna do it, then you're gonna do it. But I just mean dancing around without triggering my own stuff. Okay. Or if I'm gonna trigger it, then I'm committing to triggering it. Uh -huh. But it's for the sake of, you know, uh, portraying somebody else or, mm -hmm. or conveying something else. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but it's a weird thing, you know. Um, opening up things over and over again is a weird thing. And, and and getting used to that and being okay with that. Um, I think Stephen King, actually, the author who once said, he said the key to a good writer is never forgetting anything that happened to you. That's why I'm not a good writer. <laughs> <laughs> never forgetting anything that happened to you. I think what he means by that is like the, the, real, the real moments. And I, and, and I don't, I'm paraphrasing, I don't want to, get that because I'm probably getting that quote wrong but that's the gist of it and I think it means by like any real pivotal moment that happens to you, you really have no matter good no matter how good or bad you have to carry the, all of those things around with you mm -hmm. to really write a story that people can relate to mm -hmm. you know um, and the same goes with actors the same goes with musicians same goes with paint painters same goes with dancers yeah they all have to trigger something within you that all has to come from somewhere you know um but like I said, I mean, I think um, I think I'm actually just now delving into like the deep ends of that of what that could mean, you know, and um, and what what I can fully do, you know. I look so. forward to that, man. <laughs> I mean, it brings us perfectly to the last question because yeah. I feel like on that platform you're gonna thrive into this next um, chapter in your life. What does thrive mean to you? Uh, well, in my short experience, I think thriving is growing, and growing is thriving, and um, there's never such thing as the end or um, knowing all there is to know about any one thing. I think one thing that I can say about what I do in my in my 
line of work. Mm -hmm. uh, you're always going to be learning something about yourself that you didn't know before. You're always going to be put in a situation that you don't know if you can handle, but you will somehow handle it. Um, and I think you're always going to be constantly surprised with who you meet next or what you go through next. And I think it, there's always a way of things happening differently than your expectations. But not, maybe not bad or, or um, it could be, they could be better. It could be a better version of anything that you predicted. Um, thriving is adapting as well. Adaptability, I think, is one of the most important things that you can, if you can bend and never break and never um, never let things really bring you down and break you as a person. I think there's always more to learn. There's more to learn if, if you're if you're willing to get to that next page by by being will, willing to adapt to whatever it is that's going on. Um, you're gonna A, change, and B, be better for it, I think. I think there's always something else to, to learn. Growth, I think is the most important thing. That was his summary yeah. on the definition of thrive. I have too many things to say right yeah, now. Yeah, man, I love it. I have too many things to ask you. Yeah. This Thank is what you, happens. brother. Yeah, I know, course. literally. Come Thank back, you. come back anytime. I sit here with my brain. I will. <laughs> your brain and your bomb. <laughs> All right.